Okay. Uh, Mr. McCall, you, I think we have one more quick page on the cable studio for this year. <laughs> yeah. So um, we have met with cable a couple times over the year also because we have uh, the cable contract coming up. But um, they're looking to spend $34,000 on a playback system as well as putting um, essentially the hybrid capabilities in the veterans room downstairs for subcommittee meetings. Mm -hmm. uh, those numbers are 34,000 and 20,700 respectively. Those would be coming out of um, their revolving accounts associated right. with the, the cable. Right. Peg yeah. monies. So none of that is, none of that is free cash? No. Yeah. Karen? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair, if I could. Could I just provide some revised totals since some of the items did change okay. due to the USDA? Okay. The, um, the CIPC amount approved instead of the 5,766, the, the revised total is 5,806,637. The free cash total the revised amount would be one million one ninety five one twenty eight. And the other sources would be three million thirty eight thousand nine twenty four. And then the funding total will be the same as the approved the five million eight oh six six thirty seven. Okay. And how much did we actually get back? How much do we have in certified free cash? For clarification. It was the um, the available certified free cash is a million three eighty seven eight oh two. Because okay. there were already two amounts that were appropriated from the certified free right. cash. Okay. okay. Anybody else have any comments or questions on Essentially, on this year's um, capital proposal. Um, Mr. Chair. Jackie, go ahead. Um, I'm, just, I'm going to just kind of, this is a question about process because um, it seems this year we're, go, we're going with a little bit of a different model than we have in years past in which we would make changes at the subcommittee level, and we're not doing that this year. Um, however, I feel like this one is a little bit different than the rest. Okay. Just because this is this is a revolving account, this is a this is a one-time expenditure, correct? So I, I just I don't know what to do going forward with the recommendation because as it stands, my thought is if I'm going to vote on a recommendation, I'm going to want to make changes to make this comfortable for the recommendation of the subcommittee. Okay. Well, that's that's what that's what we're that's what we're here for. Um, so do we want to do we want to deal with this? for this year's make changes now, or do we want to go through the rest of the, the capital plan and then come back, for, come back for this year's changes? Well, my original thought was that he was just going to go through the rest of the years, which are stated, but not necessarily. Some might, some might be funded, some might not be. Okay. Go through them, so that's where it was supposed to go. Even though we talked a lot about free cash, okay. that would have been my thought, and then you're going to go back and you're going to decide, and you could do a, a recommendation vote on, on each of the, the sections. Okay. Okay. Or that way, you know, that way the, the, the council knew, knows rather. What I'm, I'm fine with that. Yeah. Otherwise, you do the whole thing as an up or down, and that doesn't seem right either. No, it doesn't. Because exactly. Okay. Mr. Mr. Chair, if I could, um, we have um, our treasurer collector here, Melissa Zawatsky. I yep. was wondering if you would allow her to speak on the issue of the, um, the, the, the fire truck, about the leasing versus like po possibly borrowing for it. I have no problem with that. Change it. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. So, I guess we're off topic, but um, so Karen, um, let me know that the there's a. Karen, let me know that there's a proposal to lease 
a fire truck in yep. the capital plan. And so, um, yep. first I heard of it about 15 minutes ago. So typically, um, it is not generally less expensive to lease a vehicle, and right. lease is not borrowing. So that would mean that you would have to appropriate in the operating budget to cover lease costs. Right. So that's different than what right. you are currently doing. And I don't know why you would want to pull it out of capital, um, because we categorize capital um, very specifically, and we don't have our capital in our operating budgets. Okay. Um, secondly, uh, the, the lease that I saw just a few minutes ago um, has a rate that is very comparable to what we're going to get for borrowing and does not um, allow us to um, take advantage of the premium that we will receive in a large borrowing. Um, so we go out for a borrowing. Um, this will be this, uh, we did one two years ago, we're gonna do one this year. We will probably do one next year because there's a refinancing available um, next fiscal year around this time. So um, to borrow for a vehicle at that time to merge it with a, another large um, refinancing, um, we would be able to capitalize on a premium, which what the premium does is where we might get the exact same rate that the lease is offering, we get a, um, we get a payment from right. the lender to uh, get that rate, which ultimately reduces the amount that we physically borrow for. Right. So the amount that we end up paying back is significantly less. So our rate might be three and a quarter, three and a half, but because we get $100,000 to put towards that payment, we're not borrowing um, 600000 we're borrowing 500000 and right. that savings is significant over the cost of the life of the loan. So I just Absolutely. think that those things should be recognized mm -hmm. when you propose something like this. Uh, secondly, it's important to note that while leasing is not borrowing, you do have to file if it is um, tax exempt, which I assume that this company is. There are a couple of different companies that do fire truck leasing and ambulance leasing. I've seen those before. Um, they, uh, they do require a filing from the treasurer's office, um, and that number um, has to be included um, so that we make sure that we maintain um, levels under $10 million so that all of our borrowings are um, tax-exempt, mm -hmm. um, which also affects our rate. So if for some reason a lease happens um, that the treasurer is unaware of, and then the treasurer goes out to um, lease something, we could get into a penalty situation where we're issuing um, tax-exempt bonds when we really meet our limit if we're anywhere close to that $10 million range, which would not be a problem uh, this year, but certainly if we're going to do the fire station, those numbers will come up, um, and in, depending on how we roll out uh, a large project like that. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to make everyone aware of those considerations when you um, when you look at something like this. Okay, thank you very much. I didn't know that. Um, go ahead. Thank you. For you to Melissa, um, you're saying that it's not normal to lease vehicles using a capital plan, but we're doing so with the school district. How is that any different? The school district, we're doing that school district pays their leases out of their operating budget. But the... It, that, that, that's the, how I've always the, seen leases before. So there is an item the, in here that's from the, the capital. It is not part of the debt budget. Number one, it's the first priority item: lease purchase to replace right. 1994 mm -hmm. 350 and 1999 Ford 250. This is the right. third year we've been doing it. So right. if, we're, if this is something that we shouldn't be doing, why is this being brought up now when we've been doing this for three years with the school department? Right. right, but it's not part of the borrowing budget is what I'm trying to say, mm -hmm. and it has to be reported. So I did know about those leases um, because you have to make those payments every year, but it's not part of the debt budget, and then they also have to be classified. I'm just not a huge fan of leases. And additionally, school departments are more likely to do this, and those vehicles are significantly less expensive than a okay. fire vehicle or an ambulance. Very true. So you're talking more like a forty, fifty thousand dollar vehicle versus a six hundred thousand dollar vehicle. Right. Mm -hmm. right. But, 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 but we did it on the tablets as well. We paid the leases for three yeah. years on the So tablet. tablets, copiers, those kind of things, um, but those are not um, a It was tablet, a lot of money. Tablet while you consider it capital does not have the longevity of right. say a um, 
a fired vehicle of 20 years. It's a very short-term lifespan. A tablet has less than three years or so, like yeah. a five-year lifespan. Yeah. It's a different type, it, 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 it's just it like same as a copier, you know, and you get the maintenance with it. Um, copiers are often leased um, right. as well um, mm -hmm. because they provide a service with that. So okay. I don't have a problem. I think your explanation is awesome, and I would just assume the chief will look into requesting that when the next big borrowing comes up. Okay. okay. Jackie, you were trying to say something? Yeah, uh, it just, it seems a little... It just seems a little weird to me that we're, we're having, it, it's $43,000 each year for the school district for two vehicles, mm -hmm. and it's 51320 for a leasing of a fire vehicle um, for 15, and I, I, I get the concern Melissa laid out, but it, it just seems like we're doing it for one department, we've set the precedent for one department, um, the precedent for one department, we should be following it and being fair to all departments, and not just picking and choosing departments. That's just my Purview, okay. Uh, my perception. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Jackie. Go ahead. I'm just saying there's additional costs with leasing that you right. should consider. Right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. As I as I recall, when I was when um, Seth, I think, was talking about that particular issue, or no, sorry, when Paul was talking about about that potential lease, I just did a quick uh, back of the envelope calculation. It looked like that when he was talking about it, that the total interest would come to would come to like seven hundred sixty-five thousand. Not just not just the five hundred and whatever it was that we were talking about initially, but that's not a surprise. Any any borrowing will come up to a heart, much larger sum, mm -hmm. which is why we need a public infrastructure bank. To be honest with you, get away from the the private the private sources of money. Um, Paul, go ahead. Yeah. So, so obviously, this is just a, a something that we throw out there. Or I throw out there to make some options for these higher price vehicles. That Absolutely. Every year we fight over capital money, and that's what we're doing right now. Um, right. The fire department needs ambulances and fire trucks and people to make, keep moving. Um, you know, I'm willing to work a plan out, but we don't have a plan. We right. don't have a plan to make this work. Um, this financial option is definitely, a lease option is definitely a, a, an option for us. It's not a complete plan. Um, Melissa's information is, is great also, but we need to, to, to continue to replace vehicles as they continue to get older, sure. break down, and cost more money. So I, I appreciate everybody's input. Um, you know, I don't want to belabor this too much longer, but obviously uh, some of the councils, when they get to look at this, they're going to have some, uh, some spins on all of this too. So uh, I'll, I'll be quiet for now, but thank you for my time. Okay, thanks, Paul. Okay. Uh, and I think Mr. McCall just walked out for some reason. <laughs> Is he, he's coming back, I hope, right? Huh? Maybe he does. Mr. Chair, can we take a five-minute break? Absolutely. I have no problem with that. Anybody object to taking a five-minute break? Unfortunately, I was just told that the uh, that we have not this brought up this year's uh, sewer or water capital, and unfortunately, they're not here. They're in the back. They're in the back. They're in the back. They're way in the back. They're not. They're not lined up the way they. Oh, there they are. Yeah, they're okay. In the back. Yeah, it's kind of a weird location because they. Uh... Oh, you saw. Okay, I see what you did. You set them, set them up separately. Okay. Okay. So most of this stuff, I see most of the stuff you put in here is actually operating budget. So we're, so we're going to address, like, take a look at the stuff that's from the enterprise, from the enterprise funds and free cash. Okay. It's not that, there's not too many things, fortunately. Okay. Um, do you want? Do, would you like to address this, Mr. McCall, or would you like to go straight to Heather for this? So cool. the water and sewer stuff. Let me get to FY twenty. In the interest of time, it, mm -hmm. we do have Ms. Blakely here, our DPW director, um, because she can probably answer a lot of the questions. Mm -hmm. um, they have submitted uh, $1.2 million, or they have $1.2 million in requests, um, and we were looking at um, recommending uh, $600,000 
of those requests, which would come out of the uh, Enterprise Fund retained mm -hmm. earnings, she could probably go through and answer these uh, quicker and with more detail than I. So I would yield okay. my time to Ms. Heather? Blakely. Okay, thank you. Heather? Okay, so I'm not sure which is first in your packet, but I guess I'll start with sewer. Is that? Um, uh, water is actually water. first. Water is actually first? Okay, yeah. that's fine. I have them both laid out here. So as you um, probably recall, we do water and sewer in a, kind of an interesting way. We do put some of the what we call capital money into the operating budget. Right. And then we also have what we um, will do for borrowings or out of retained earnings. So water, we break our water capital items down into five different categories, and I believe there's actually a sixth one we've added here this year. So we have system, which is the distribution system, and I don't have the totals summed up, but that actually will correspond to a number in our water budget. And some of the highlights, we have leak detection, our ongoing valve and hydrant replacement programs. Mm -hmm. We have some money for replacement meters when we need to, stock and fittings um, for so that we have things in stock in case we have breaks, pump station maintenance, and um, pump station control equipment maintenance. You know, we have all of our pump stations now are automated. In equipment, we have replacement of a 2012 F350 with a plow. Um, they, we've, I've spoken before that all of our programs are trying to get them on a 10-year cycle to replace the trucks as they're 10 years old. That truck would actually end up going to DPW and kicking out one of our older trucks so that we're kind of trying to still keep the newer truck, but because water has enough capacity to borrow, yep. uh, well, not borrow, but spend out of their capital budget, we're replacing it. Um, some miscellaneous tools and equipment upgrades, treatment plant upgrades, maintenance in the building, general filter maintenance. Then we have some tech support for SCADA, our utility cloud, um, and engineering. We end up always having some general maintenance repairs in the watershed. And the big item, the new one item that's in here is from the facility plan, um, the paving of some of our lots. If you've been up to the water treatment plant, the paving is badly failing um, up there around the backhand side and there's some other spots on both Sav and Cohasi Res that the paving has got to the point where it's failing, needs maintenance, so that we would put out a bid to have those come be re pavement removed and repaved. Then in the larger items that are coming out of the retained earnings, um, we have started a program of replacing roofs at the facilities up in the reservoirs. We have done one already. Um, and we're looking to get bids out for a second one, but this would be a larger project for two of them. They, they're getting to be more and more expensive um, because of how they have to be done. These roofs, uh, if you've been up to some of the buildings, we literally are gonna have to put staging out over the reservoir to be able to construct the next one, so just that in itself makes it much more expensive. I can't hear you. The last time you did a roof project, at, I think the water in the water project, and you you ended up having a lot of. Did you end up having a fair amount of extra material that you could use? So we've you we had the new roof put on the water yeah. department because of the other one wasn't properly fastened. We had some extra materials. The same materials are trying to be. We're using up that material. It, they're metal roofs, so we've taken that material and put it on the next one. I think we'll probably have maybe enough for one or two more. But still, the construction cost and prepping is extremely expensive. Right. Um, and then we have in the budget for both water and sewer is a portable generator that's going to be split between the two of them. Um, as some of you are probably aware, we're renting a generator right now for the sewer plant. But this would be, a, instead of having a rental generator that's a standby emergency mm -hmm. generator, it would be a portable generator that would be a standby generator, but it would be, we're splitting the cost in half, it's about $90,000. Mm -hmm. That way we wouldn't have to lease generators when, another, when our regular generator is down. The South Street um, sewer pump stations generators down, it's not repairable. It's, mm -hmm. it's an old generator that was actually built from a boat motor. Um, they, they basically tell me we can't get parts for it anymore. It's, we can't replace right where it is in kind. Mm -hmm. So we're actually gonna have to go out for engineering 
Um, we have some concepts of there, and there was actually money already set aside. We're just trying to get caught up with some of all of our other projects. So, mm -hmm. but the portable generator. This isn't the only time we've had to rent portable generators. So it's kind of shown us that there's a need to have this as a, an important standby piece of equipment mm -hmm. in case it goes down, because we always have to have power at both the water and sewer pump stations. So this is the solution. We want to buy one of these so that we have our own standby. The good news is that it can do, I have a list of all the stations that if we bought the size that we're looking at, it will be able to do, um, I think there's just one station that it can't do. Okay. So it's okay. actually very versatile. Good. And I can't do the two big plants, the water and the sewer plant, because they're much larger generators, but it will be able to, out of like our 10 stations, there's only one it won't be able to do. Good. Okay. And do, do, do. where am uh, I? The other thing you had water. Is water there's some, so that's 45. We have um, water main improvements. Um, we're trying to target some of the locations that we've had some issues on mm -hmm. and that we want to actually do some paving work on. So Gardner High and Worcester Street, we have a half million dollars in there to do um, targeted improvements. Gardner Street's one of the streets that we have so many complaints on. The main is undersized there and it's very, um, I know Mr. Marchetti, Councilor Marchetti was at my building the other day and I showed him the six inch main that was broken on Main Street. Well, the main on Gardner Street is in the same way. So it's we're going to get that, that out. There's some tie overs that we want to do on Worcester Street from an old main that's an old six inch main on one side of the road to the to a newer main so that we can decommission the six inch main and mm -hmm. we won't have any problems in the future. We're trying to do those things so that we can prep for paving. Right. And I think those are all the items that we had in the water. You can see we've crossed out some, moving them yep. over right. um, in the water budget. Excellent. Any Do questions or comments on these items? No? Just for personal reference, what part of High Street are you going to do? Um, this would be, so High Street, just below the revs, <laughs> right where the res where? is. So okay. There, there's a part of High Street we were looking to resurface because they've done the gas main and yes. part of it's already done. Well, High Street has some of our oldest water mains in town and there's a whole bunch of crisscrossed mains there that yep. we're kind of concerned of. So we want to get the old main out and just have one nice new main so that we don't go and pave the road and then have a water main break. So sense. they're some of the oldest infrastructure in town that were there when the old water system actually used to come out of the res, mm -hmm. out of res one. Mm -hmm. Yes, that was part of the drinking water system. Mm -hmm. So we're going to get those out, replace them with a new main so that they're never going to cause us a problem in the future. And then that can be paved. That makes sense. Okay. Cool. Any further questions on these? Jackie, do you have anything? I have none, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, sewer, uh, sewer cap for this year. Okay, on to sewer? Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, before you do, just a quick second. Yep. There, there wouldn't have to be somebody who has an mm -hmm. Apple Mac charger, would there be available? Because I, I forgot to bring mine with me. I didn't think I didn't think I'd need it, and I, my Mac is starting to get low. So. Okay, I don't have one. I'm sorry, okay. but um, <laughs> on to the sewer plant. So again, we break it down into plant, meaning operations at the plant, tech services, which are more of engineering, collect and collection systems. So from the plant side, we have some money in there to do some, um, some maintenance on the building that was recommended in the um, facilities plan. They have asked for the replacement of their water pump, so they have a water system. They have, um, they have a I'm getting, I'm getting plant water, which is basically they use the treated water to use for operational purposes. It actually saves on water costs because they have a lot of water usage in this plant. Um, that's for the pumps and the strainers. Uh, replacement of the roof on the sludge pumping station, on primary clarifier. We already have the designs done for that. We just need to get the bids out and actually have money to do it. Um, 
a access platform for the new generator. The new generator is access, uh, in order to get into it, you have to basically go up a small ladder and then go back down the other side. It's much different than the old one. So they want to get something that they can just go up a set of stairs and go back down in. Painting on the clarifiers. Um, if you've been down there, these are big metal tanks. They need to have constant maintenance or they start to degrade and rust out. So you have to keep on maintaining them. And then we get to tech support, update of the odor control study, general engineering assistance, root treatment, which is a thing that we normally do every year in the collection system. We have ongoing root treatment programs so that we can keep any of the roots abated. Roots love, um, unfortunately, they, they really much, they love sewer. Then you can see in the collection system, we also have out of the retained earnings, we're looking for the uh, 45 to split for the water for the portable generator. And then we have out of borrowing, a replacement for the jet truck. The jet truck is um, the truck that they use to clear clogs um, in, the wa in the sewer mains, like if you get a sewer back up, we use it for cleaning the sewer mains, which we are part of our regular system, which we clean them and then they can inspect them for I and I inflow and infiltration for breaks for other issues. Um, we actually have used this even on our drainage system sometimes if we have clogs or problems and we have to clean something out. So it's a very expensive truck. We've been running into problems with it and it, it's getting to the point where because it gets used so much and it's an abrasive environment, we're starting to run into problems with the actual jet part of the truck itself. So it had, this is coming up as part of its regular schedule program to rotate it out. The second thing that we have in there is our collection system um, phase two evaluation. Um, this is part of our INI ongoing requirements from DEP. So we did our phase one study last year, which was measuring how much inflow and infiltration we have with measurements and correlations and doing and looking at how that looks at. And phase two is the next part of the study that DEP is going to require us to do. Um, I think that's it. I think we've done it. So at this point, we are asking for 525000 in the operating budget for sewer, 45 coming out of the retained earnings account for sewer, with a million of proposed potential borrowings. And I will say, you know, Karen and I always, if when we go out for borrowings, if it gets to the point where we think we still have enough money in our retained earnings, a lot of times it's always to borrow or appropriate a different way. We don't always borrow money, even though we might think at this point we are. We may be able to, depending on what comes in subsequent years for retained earnings money and what we get for certifications, we may be able to use not borrow a half of this or something. We always reevaluate what's in the account before we uh, borrow. the sewer um, capital for this year. Okay. I have one. Yep. Um, the dam repairs and maintenance. In water? Uh, sewer, I think. Dam repairs and maintenance. Water capital, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm like, where did I get a dam and sewer? Okay. Yes? The, the reservoirs, dam, and watershed maintenance. So we have five dams and over a thousand acres of watershed that we, you know, so it could be maintenance on the roads in there, keeping them up. It could be any, anything associated with that section of the plan. So it's kind of, yes, it's our little fund in case something goes wrong in there. Sometimes we have to cut trees down because they cut across the road whatever it could be in there. Boards break on our reservoirs. Um, that's where that all gets funded out of. Because I read about all these problems with older dams. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, so yes, you do read about them. We're in very good shape. We just had, um, we just are completing our, res our first dam, our hatchet dam, which is our furthest dam that we have. We just completed some work there to upgrade and, and stabilize the structure for that to make sure mm -hmm. that it has better long term. There hadn't been any maintenance done on that dam in quite a long time. 
So we, we've just refurbished that, made sure that the growth is there, make sure we patched any, we had some undermining on some of the spillways. All of that has been upgraded. Dam 5 was upgraded, I'm going to... Start. Years ago. It, it was probably about five years ago, yeah. but we have regular maintenance programs on our dams, including <laughs> like we have to do dam inspections, we have to have emergency response plans, we have to have so DCR and NDP, who we're, we have permits for mm -hmm. both of them, definitely makes us make sure that we have our dams up to date because we do have some big dams. Kohati is a very, very large dam. So we're required to keep those programs up to date and they are protecting our biggest asset in our water department, which is our water. So we don't want it to, we, we take that, it's like gold to us, We're very protective. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions or comments? No? Okay, cool. Well, that seems to be it for this year's capital budget. And uh, can we can go through a quick summary of the future years? And I'm thinking just kind of a kind of a high-level overview, not get too much into the weeds because I mean we've already been here for two and a half hours. So, um, so Mr. McCall. So our, our earlier conversations, I think, are a good segue into the overall capital plan. As I indicated, uh, coming here to Southbridge, I utilized the plan that was in place. Um, we started the budgeting process probably the end, the end of December, we started uh, working on the operating budgets and mm -hmm. then in, after the first of the year, we started looking towards the capital. Um, using what was in place by my predecessors, um, I don't know how many, how many items here have carried over even longer, um, but nevertheless, use that as a framework and we asked people along the way, the major departments submitted capital requests and some priorities for not only this fiscal year, future fiscal years, when we asked those who hadn't to submit anything that they needed. Um, the discussions that we had here this evening are, are not unanticipated because I, I think we could do a better job and it's not a criticism, I, I think having a, a committee or an ad hoc committee that worked on capital planning throughout the year um, that made this a more comprehensive process, um, incorporating people from maybe the, the larger departments, citizen member, council member, myself, maybe some members of the finance team, and made on a regular basis to discuss these needs so that we, we would do a fair evaluation and present it to you in a, in a different form, um, as well as uh, goals and objectives over the years. Now, we can go through this, but I will tell you that a lot of the things that you'll s begin to see, there's, there's routine maintenance that's right. going to come up. There, there's items in the future years for the schools. And there are always going to be things that come up and change priority. As, as I explained earlier, um, based on the USDA vote the other night, that changed a few things today, which when I met with the fire chief, changed what he wanted to add in today. Um, and notwithstanding the pumper, he said, let's flip around the, um, the forestry truck from FY23 to 24, and then flip the ambulance back based on the timing. So there's, there's always things that are gonna change these priorities, but as we look through these, you know, there's going to be your regular um, replacement of vehicles, and there's going to be um, routine maintenance, or not routine maintenance, but major improvements on various uh, facilities around town, to Mr. Smith's point earlier. I also thought it was um, interesting, our conversation, and worth pointing out that we currently operate off of five fiscal policies which were created in 2013 by then town manager Clark. Um, a lot of the things that we talked about this evening at different points, we all had uh, a similar ver uh, definition of what is a capital item. Mm -hmm. I think if we, as we discussed during the break, assembled a, a committee of council members and went out and worked on these policies, maybe we could eliminate some of the, the, that discussion if we actually put down on paper what we've been doing, what, our, what, the, uh, what a capital item is, how, how many years, how long. So 
realizing that I'm still relatively new and that we want to look at facilities, a lot of what we have in here based on previous years may change. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, would, I would imagine it will because we're going to try and tackle things as well as those monies that come in. But as we go through FY23, as I said, the, you know, you're going to see that as we have in the past, police is rotating out their fleet. Uh, most agencies get a lot of miles. Those vehicles run 24-7. So throughout the next couple of years, you're going to see those. You're also going to see um, in each year, uh, police, fire, DPW, your big three are, are going to be looking for vehicles. But then it, it comes down to the others that are usually looking for more facilities-related enhancements. And you'll see in FY23, even recreation, um, I, I, I did speak to uh, Ms. Haddock during the break, and I told her that she did not have to stay, that I would talk about some of these things. Um, you know, we've had, during council meetings, several of our recreation facilities have come up in discussion. Mm -hmm. And I've been working with Councillor Adams. We're looking at reviving the Adopt-a-Park program. We have people that want to do that. And that, again, we may have some infrastructure monies coming in. So. We may change the priority of how some of these things get tackled, um, but they are all on the on our radar screen that need to be done. But as you get through, you're going to see again when we get um, we have pavement related projects, mm -hmm. um, infrastructure in the downtown um, town hall. There's a considerable number of items that need to be tackled, um, and, and similarly with the schools. So you you heard. Uh, Mr. Racine talked about them looking to put together a master plan and submit something to MSBA to tackle some of these things. I, I know from my discussions, as I've already said, that the roofs are an issue, and it, it's not an issue that is uh, unique to Southbridge. I, I came from a, a community where, um, you know, I'm, I was one of those kids that was born uh, technically a, a boomer, you know, and my town had to build multiple elementary schools at the same time. Mm -hmm. And what happens is rather than a progressive or an evolving capital plan, you get all of these right at once. Well, 20, 30 years down the road, all the major, um, you know, uh, what do you want to call them, um, facilities within them, the HVAC, the electrical, the roof, they'll all come at end of life at the same time, not in one building, but two, three, depending upon how big your community was. So mm -hmm. we're not unique in that. It's just that we're going to be at one of those cycles where all these buildings were constructed 30 years ago, and a lot of these things are coming to end of life. But we, we have discussed that we're going to look at the facilities management plan um, you know, Mr. Uh, excuse me, Councilor Marchetti was here last week looking at the building here. There's a, a laundry list of items that need to be addressed here. Mm -hmm. um, since I've been here, you know, I've talked to Heather. We've had some during the course of the winter. You can see the streaks on the wall. We had some water coming in. So we know that there are things that need to be done, and they're spelled out in these years. And the, oftentimes using um, uh, best the best information presented at the time, which are the priorities, and you're trying to tr tackle those uh, as quickly as possible. There's one thing that isn't really addressed in here that uh, has been running through the back of my mind. Um, if people didn't see it the other day, that Governor Baker did I issue an executive order relative to the implementation of some of the net zero emissions requirements that he's going to do with state buildings. Um, about a month and a half ago, he signed legislation um, to get us to net zero by 2050. And I'm anticipating that there's going to be uh, requirements placed upon municipalities in the not too distant future to uh, expedite our movement towards net zero, which means they're going to have us look at all of our lighting, our, uh, our usage of fossil fuels and our vehicles. And I've been actually looking at what the cost and what other communities were doing. I actually talked to the fire chief about that today because I looked at an article that showed that um, a green fire engine would cost $1.2 million, and it's all electric. Hmm. The thing that he and I talked about is 
the batteries are only good for two hours and it can only pump so much water. Um, <laughs> it will change how we do everything. I, is it going to happen in the next five years? I don't know, but the executive order that came out last week is looking for the state agencies to move that way. And I'm in the process of writing a couple of emails to some people at the state to find out, you know, how long before it happens to the municipalities and what type of aid are you going to give? Are they going to have a funding formula similar to like the chapter 70 or 90 so that towns such as Southbridge who already have some challenges wouldn't be mandated to pay for a lot of these things going forward. So as we do these facility improvements and we start looking at these vehicles, should we be rethinking what we have in these latter years to uh, unfortunately, not unfortunately, but thinking more green because I think it's coming. I, I, and I don't say it unfortunately because I think it's a reality that we're gonna have to do it, but mm -hmm. I think we should be ahead of the game and starting to think, uh, are we gonna be looking at more hybrid vehicles? Um, there are hybrid cruisers, there are electric yeah. cruisers. Uh, and uh, would we be short-sighted to buy something in a year or two that within the next five years we might be told we should have been buying green or being penalized for not have bought it green. Mm -hmm. So these are things that are starting to run through my mind and if you look at what's going on around the country and as I say the legislation that's been recently passed in these orders, I think we have to be mindful of that. So if we in next year, the next budget cycle, we have a committee. I think we have to start thinking about these things going forward because that may impact um, how we make the repairs to these buildings. You know, it's really going to impact any new construction that we do. It's going to be very hard to impose some of those um, building requirements, I think, on buildings such as this. But if we build a new fire station or if we build another building down the road or a school building, I think we have to factor those things in. Mm -hmm. But to the extent that we have to make repairs on some of these buildings, um, new windows, we might have to be re required to put in uh, more energy efficient windows, which yep. may change what we've already estimated in here. So, um, you know, going forward, you know, as we get into the latter years, again, the, the chief, the fire chief had indicated we're going to need uh, ambulances. We have three ambulances and we have to rotate those in and out just like we do with the, the pumper trucks. Um, he's asked that to be moved back to fiscal 23. The police, again, you'll see um, they'll be looking for vehicles. Um, they have to rotate out other equipment such as their duty weapons. It's interesting, he has the 1997 uh, HVAC chiller in for replacement in 2024 and as you all know had a catastrophic failure recently. So mm -hmm. um, pretty close to the end of life there. Uh, again, I won't be repetitious, but there's a recreation um, and town hall repairs that need to be addressed, which I think will all change once we look at the facilities management and how we're gonna tackle the respective buildings in town and the, the uh, recreation. Um, again, DPW has a list of vehicles, part of their uh, routine mm -hmm. um, uh, exchange and of end of life of materials. You can see that they've taken out some of the pavement um, items in, in 2024 because we're rolling some of that into our pavement management plan. Right. Um, the school is again adding additional maintenance primarily to those elementary schools. You'll see the repeated initials for the Charlton Street, West Street, and uh, East, Eastford Road. So they have those, and it, it, it'll continue out through FY 25, 26, 27. Although there are fewer requests, they get a little bit, the, the overall plan gets a little bit smaller because I don't think everybody fully anticipates what they'll need. Most people, I think, are really looking at the, the next two or three years and it's really only the the um, departments that have these big fleets of vehicles that can really anticipate the rotation of those in the capital plan and some of the major capital items such as school roofs or building roofs so that's what you tend to see mm -hmm. but I, I I based that a lot off of uh, what was provided 
from my predecessors and along with, and I have to say, I, I give a lot of the credit to Ms. Harnois because not having used your format, she, she helped me and I really had to rely on her for, for doing the capital budget using your format. Um, I, I can't take credit for that. Um, so uh, she was instrumental in helping me with this because I'm used to the committee format and, and, and bouncing the ideas off of other folks. But at the end of the day, I think what we will come back to you with next year would be a little bit different in that if we're working on the facilities management plan, that'll change somewhat as well as what the priorities are. But year over year, you will see the, the fleet rotations from the various departments as well as those big capital items, um, windows, doors, and roofs, and they're in there based on the priorities of the department heads as we mm -hmm. ask from them. And I can answer any specifics that you may have to the best of my ability, but uh, we really focused on the FY22 capital budget for right. this year. Which makes sense, absolutely. Anybody have specific questions or comments or? Just, uh, I just have a quick one. Go ahead. Um, I see in 2024 you have stormwater MS4, so that you're expecting to start the stormwater management in 2024. So we have. I've I was been that keeping touch with Miss um, Blakely, Mr. Rumsey, and uh, Mr. Desjardins, and I, I want to say they have a draft right now. So we of our bylaws. So we're going to have to implement it at some point. Um, we're required to, so we're finalizing our bio, stormwater bylaws, um, and then Ed, we will have to come up with how we're, our integration plan after that. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Yeah, I was going to ask about that too, so thanks. Seems a little low. Huh? I said that number seems a little low, but hopefully. I prob unfortunately, it probably is a little low. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, but we'll, we'll see. I mean, we, I don't think we're entirely sure exactly how it's going to play out. I don't think anybody really knows. Yeah. They're just kind of throwing this at us and not really giving us a whole lot of help on how to figure it out, are they? No, it's unfunded. Yep. Um, one of the things that can kind of jumped out at me um, as just a quick question is the, uh, where'd it go? In fiscal 23, in fiscal 23, the schools have an engineering for exterior envelope and roofs. For all, of their, for, for all of the elementary schools, which is the project that, that they want to do this year. Was that something that was shifted forward or was it just something that was kind of forgotten from, like, from last year when they, when they did it this year? Or when they're proposing it for this year? Seth, maybe you can answer that? Thank you, Councillor. The, as you will note in the out years for the school department, our requests grow substantially. I mentioned before our future costs um, were actually outlined by an outside evaluation done two years ago when the town did a facilities evaluation plan. Right. In that plan, um, we listed out all of those costs that were in there according to that timeline that was established. <laughs> And the schools grow substantially. Mm -hmm. um, they grow from 1.5 million in FY23 to 9.2 million in FY24, 16.6 million in FY25. And so this specific uh, envelope study is about the replacement of the roofs and when we saw the increase in the cost um, coming in future years uh, this was what led to the proposal for a study this year to say kind of like sort of like let's time out hold on before we we have identified a couple years ago that there are really major costs coming all at once for four buildings these for road school Charlton Street School, the West Street School, and the 25 Coal Ave. Before we start down that road to commit and the, and the activities required for them to replace roofs, to replace boilers, are these the right buildings to be investing in? That makes um, sense. And that's what led to the, um, 
are putting down a master plan study okay. um, for next year uh, so we can avoid some of these costs if they're unnecessary. That makes sense. But it is not, but to clarify, it is not a duplicative cost, um, though I would say we would review every single item we would have if a master plan study happened and we decide to go down a different plan for elementary schools. Okay. Thank you, Seth. That was helpful. Anybody else have a comment or question on any of these items? Granted, this is just kind of a general overview and things will, are prone to change every year to some degree. No? Jackie, do you have anything? Nothing on the future year plans, Mr. Chair. Okay. Okay. Good enough. Okay, so going, jumping back to this year's plan, what do, what do we want to do? I know that there's been some concerns raised about, a certain, about certain items. Um, and I know during the break we were throwing around the idea of whether or not we wanted to, to recommend in general but single, single out specific items as concerns for the, for the council as a whole. How do you want to do it? I, Mr. Chair. Go ahead. I was thinking we'd go through section by um, department section by department section and okay. recommend that specific section as is. And if we feel like we want to not make a recommendation on a specific section and let council talk about it, that might be the way to do it. Sounds good to me. Okay, so the airport. We have that one item, which is, a, which is mostly being funded by capital 18 project money of 45,000. What's your, what's your pleasure on that one? Mr. Chair? Go ahead. I make a motion that we recommend in uh, the affirmative the airport um, capital, fiscal year 22 capital um, request in the amount, uh, the total amount of $45,000. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any f comments or questions? Since we've already kind of beaten it to death. Okay. All those in favor? Councilor Ryan? Yes. Councilor Marchetti? Yes. Uh, Ms. Shea? Yes. Ms. Clements? Yes. And myself? Yes. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Fire Department. Mr. Chair? Go ahead. I make a recommendation that we make no recommendation to the full council on the, um, the Fire Department uh, capital request for fiscal year 2022. Okay. Is there a second on that? Huh? Oh, no changes, she means. Do you, mean, do you mean no changes or no recommendation? I was meaning no recommendation, no so recommendation. that way, because it's one of the sections we talked about quite extensively tonight. I feel like maybe this is a discussion to be had at the full council level, okay. um, since the precedent has been this year not to make changes to the overall budget line items at the subcommittee level to leave this up to council, since there seemed to be a quite a bit of discussion on it. That was my rationale. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Is there a second on that? I'll second. Okay. Any further comments or questions? Okay. All those in favor of making no recommendation to full council? Council Marchetti? No. Council uh, Ms. Shea? Yes. Council Ryan? Yes. Ms. Clemens? Yes. Um, and I'll do yes. Okay. Four to one. Okay. Uh, for no rec. Okay. Um, police department. Mr. Chair? Go ahead. I make a recommendation that we recommend in the affirmative the uh, police department budget um, for fiscal year, uh, capital budget for fiscal year 2022 and the amount of uh, $101,508, or no, excuse me, one thirty. is it the one, total 139000 mm -hmm. Okay. 139000 yeah. Okay. Second. Yeah. Okay, we have a, okay, so. DR and DCL, okay. So we have first and a second. Any further comments? Okay. All those in favor? Councillor Ryan? Yes. Councillor Marchetti? Yes. Ms. Shea? Yes. Ms. Clements? Yes. And myself? Yes. Okay. Have to? Okay. Uh, let's see here. Uh, the animal kennel. $20,000. Can I have a motion? Mr. Chair? Go ahead. I make the motion that we um, send in the affirmative the uh, and uh, the police animal kennel budget in the amount of $20,000 up to council. 
Okay. Second. Okay. Um, okay. Um, any comments? No. Okay. Councillor Marchetti. Yes. Ms. Shea. Yes. Councillor Ryan. Yes. Ms. Clemens. Yes. And myself, yes. Okay. Uh, inspections, do we have anything for them? Inf information technology, 135 grand. Make a motion. Oh, uh, you'll make a motion to do what? To recommend a f affirmative. Okay. Do second. We have a second, okay. Okay, so DC, MS, okay. Any last comments? Okay, Councillor Ryan. Yes. Councillor Marchetti. Yes. Ms. Shea? Yes. Ms. Clements? Yes. Myself? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. Nothing from the library? Nothing from recreation, community center, train station. Okay, DPW. What's your pleasure? Uh, so I can see, where are we? Um, Council, uh, Ms. Clements? I said yes. Yes. Councilor, Councilor Ryan? You. <laughs> yes. Okay, Councilor Marchetti? No. Uh, Ms. Shea? Yes. And I'm a yes. Okay. Did so that one is yes? a four to one. Okay. Okay. The next section. Uh, let's see here. The, uh, the deep. Where am I here? I thought that was DPW. Okay. okay. That was DPW you just did. Okay. Keep going. Okay. Uh, let's see. No town hall. So we are down to the schools. Mr. Chair. Go ahead. I make the motion that we make no recommendation on the fiscal year 2022 capital uh, budget for the Southwood Public School System in the amount of $643,432. Is there a second? I'll make it do okay. okay. I'll we make do a motion that we take it by line item. Is there a second to that one? Because we did not get a second for, for I'll hers. second that. Okay, so we have a first and a second to do it by line item. Okay. I don't so think that really needs to be voted on if we're gonna if we can sense on just doing it by line item. I think we can just do it that way. There's only a few lines. Yeah, there's only a few of them. Okay. So what's your pleasure? Uh, let's see. I'll make a motion to, for affirmative recommend a positive recommendation for the emergency roof repairs of a hundred thousand dollars. Is there a second? second? Okay, we'll get a second. First and a second on roof repairs. Any further comments on that? Councillor Marchetti? Yes. Ms. Shea? Yes. Councillor Ryan? Yep. Yes. Ms. Clements? Yes. And myself? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, so that's a yes. Five to one. Five to one. Okay. Mr. Chair? Go ahead. I make a motion that we cut out the $200,000 from the master plan, or we both do not recommend the $200,000 for the master plan study for the elementary schools in 25 call app. Okay. Is there a second? A second. Okay. And DC? Okay. So, so a negative recommendation for that. Any further comments on that one? Ms. Clements. Comments? No, call, comments oh, okay. going to a vote if we have no comments. Oh, comments? I'm okay. sorry, you said any comments. Yes, you did, right. um, uh, Yes, a negative recommendation. Okay. Councilor Ryan. Yes. Councilor McKetty. Yes. Ms. Shea. Yes. And myself, yes, okay. Okay. Or to not Um. Okay, we have the uh, interior repairs, including painting, handrails, and door repairs of 140,000. Is there a motion? So moved. To do what? To uh, accept the 140,000 okay. for um, interior repairs. Okay, to re recommend it, okay. I'll second that. Okay. Any further comments or questions? I would have reduced it to 100. And given 40 for something important. <laughs> you can, if, if you yeah. want to make that as, a, I, as I, a type I, of amendment, oh. you can do that. <laughs> if you make that as an amendment, um, Citizen Member Clements, I will second it. <laughs> I will amend, okay. I, will, I will make that amendment that we recommend uh, $100,000, that I amended to $100,000, not $140,000. Okay. 40000 okay, that is a friendly amendment? That's the amendment, okay. yeah. Okay. 40000 to be used at the discretion of the council towards other needs. That would be our, my recommendation. Okay, with 40K at discretion, I can um, discretion. I'm sorry, I, did, I didn't hear you, Ms. Clemens. Uh, 100,000 instead of 140 okay. for the repairs. Okay. 40,000 to be utilized in some other discretion of the council. They can 
Are you thinking in general needs or specifically for no, students? No, I would think it'd be specific cap, uh, capital need for capital 40,000 need. towards a capital need. In general or for the schools? In general, for in the general. town. Okay. For other capital needs. Okay. Other okay. Okay, so we have a motion and a second on that. You accept it as a friendly amendment. Who, was, who seconded that originally? Um, I did, and I will accept that did. amendment as well. Okay, good. So now it's now now we're recommending it as a hundred thousand dollars with forty thousand as at, at council discretion to other other general capital needs. Okay. Any further comments or questions on that? Do either of you have anything you want to say about that? I don't know. I thought a hundred sounded better to give to the school, and forty could be. You know, there were radio needs. There was needs for the police, needs for the fire, needs for. Um, there were other needs, and I just think that that's something people can mull around in the next week, and uh, maybe the department heads will mull around and use the best best use for it. I don't know. It okay. just. I didn't like the. I did not like one hundred and forty. I'm sorry. They picked the wrong number for my me to like. I okay. like a hundred to give them to their doors and knobs and painting, and I thought that was enough. And I think 40000 can go to something else. Okay. I don't care if it goes to more towards the animal shelter. I don't care if it goes, well, I do care technically that it could go to something that we need. Okay. This community needs, whether, again, it's radios or bulletproof vests or something that was not funded that we need. Okay. So be it. Not my judgment. It will be the council's judgment. Right. Uh, Seth, do you have anything, anything you would like to say about that proposal? Thank you, Councillor, um, for the opportunity to speak. Uh, it, obviously, we would support um, the, the, the request that we put forward. Um, and I think as it was, it was not raised tonight, but it has been raised in uh, the last budget hearing, is that actually the House Ways and Means has proposed um, a, a higher amount in uh, Chapter 78 in net education aid to town Southbridge above the governor's budget, and there's $111,000 above the, our appropriation request of 1%. Um, and so we were hoping that an amount of that would go towards um, these capital needs and would go towards that um, because the purpose was for education. Um, as we have noted, there's a number of different costs for the town, for the school buildings, and these costs are growing. So uh, any costs you could have would be greatly appreciated. Okay. Mr. Chair, as I said, council can decide on whatever town need could mm -hmm. go back to school, could go anything they want. Right. But it's town need, whatever they see fit. I just felt like 100000 was enough. So. Okay. okay. Does anybody else have a comment or question on this one? Okay. Councillor Ryan. Yes. Councillor Marchetti. No. Ms. Chen. Yes. Ms. Clemens. Yes. Yes. And I'm a yes. Okay. So that was a four to one. Okay. Uh, let's see. We were at um, the electronic visual aid displays at $160,000. Mr. Chair? Go ahead. I'll make a motion that we recommend the $160,000 towards uh, electronic visual aids displays. I'll second it. Okay. Okay. So we have a motion and a second. Any further comments or questions? Okay. Ms. Clements? Yes. Ms. Shea? Yes. Councilor McKetty? Yes. Councilor Ryan? Yes. And myself, yes. Okay. Five and zero. And last but not least, the lease purchase of the 1995 Ford F-350 and 99 to replace the 1995 Ford 350 and 1999 Ford 250, year three of three of 43 grand, 40, 43, 432. So moved. Oh, I'll make a motion to recommend. Okay. Yes, sorry. <laughs> That's, fine. That's fine. I know you meant. You know what I mean. Okay, so we got a first and a second on that one. Are there any other comments or questions? Okay, Councillor Marchetti. Yes. Ms. Shea. Yes. Councillor Ryan. Yes. Ms. Clemens. Yes. And myself, yes. Yes. Right. Oh. Okay. And. Last but not least, the cable studio. Mr. Chair. Go ahead. 
I make a motion that we recommend the Cable Studio Fiscal Year 2022 capital budget in the amount of $54,700. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Oh, second. Okay. Second. Um, actually, I think in your case, you probably need to, you probably need to abstain on this one because you're on the Cable Committee. I'm actually on the Advisory Committee, but yeah. whatever. Okay. So, so. Uh, That's he, not why I would, didn't make the motion. Okay. Are there any further comments or questions? Okay, Councillor Ryan. Yes. Councillor Marchetti. Yes. Ms. Shea. Yes. And I'm a yes. And Ms. Ryan, Ms. Clements, sorry. I'll abstain. Okay. But that's not why. I don't agree with the vote. Okay. Do you have anything you would like to say? No. Nope. Okay. For further discussion. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Well, that's, that's everything for, for this year's capital budget. Is there, a, is there a motion regarding the more general, the next several years uh, for just kind of an overview regarding sending it up to the council? Michelle. I move that the chairman uh, and the uh, town manager form a committee to study uh, the true needs of the town for the uh, capital for the next you know, four or five years. We hmm. say five. That's not what we're discussing, are we? Are Second? We? No, I don't think that's. No, that's yeah, not the I agenda. Think we, can, we can bring that up at a Gen Gov meeting. Yeah, we can bring that. We'll definitely bring that up at Gen Gov okay. in the future. Okay. But is there a motion specifically to about recommending the five year, the six year capital plan? I, I make a motion to accept the five year capital plan or six year capital plan. Okay. okay. Thank you. Second. Okay. Okay. Any further comments or questions on that? Okay. Ms. Shea? No. Okay. Councilor Marchetti? Yes. Councilor Ryan? Yes. Ms. Clements? Yes, because we're just motioning it to move it up to council. Yes. So, yes. And myself, yes. Okay. Four to one. Okay. And that's, that seems to be it for tonight. Um, don't we have, do we have to approve the final amount for the water and sewer? Oh, right. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, we do. Okay. Um, so uh, water, the water capital for fiscal 22. <laughs> which uh, the grand total for there is 1246500 Mr. Chair? Go ahead. I make a motion that we recommend the council the acceptance of the fiscal year 2022 uh, water capital project amount in the amount of one million two hundred forty-six thousand five hundred dollars. Okay. Second. There, okay. Good enough. Any further comments or questions on that? Councillor Marchetti. Yes. Ms. Shea. Yes. Ms. Clements. Yes. Councillor Ryan. Yes. And myself. Yes. Okay. Good. Okay, and last but not least, the uh, sewer capital for fiscal 22. Yeah. Uh, which is 1,593,000. Right. Mr. Chair. Go ahead. I make a motion that we recommend to council the fiscal year 2022 sewer capital project budget in the amount of $1,593,000. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any further comments or questions? Okay. Ms. Clements? Yes. Councilor Ryan? Yes. Councilor Marchetti? Yes. Ms. Shea? Yes. And myself? Yes. Okay. And uh, to, to recommend the water, the water plant, the water, um, plan for, or the water capital budget plan for fiscal 23 and forward. What's your, what's your pleasure? To, sure. Just to recommend, just to, to recommend to, it to send to it to council. To recommend to send it to council. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. As, Is there a second on that? As presented. Second. Okay. Okay. Any further comments or questions? Ms. Shea. Yes. Council Marchetti. Yes. Councilor Ryan? Yes. Yes. Ms. Clements? And myself, yes. Okay. Excellent. And last but not least, the, the sewer capital for fiscal 23 and beyond. 
Mr. Chair. Go ahead. Make a recommendation that we move this up to council. Okay. Mr. Second. So second. Moved. Yes. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I, think I heard her first, so. Okay. And uh, Ms. Shea? Yes. Councilor Marchetti? Yes. Ms. Clement? Yes. Councilor Ryan? Yes. And myself? Yes. Okay. I think that's everything. Very cool. Well, it is now 921. Is Mr. Chair, was there an official vote on the free cash distribution? Officially? Yeah, we went to all the no, recommendations. No. We went by the, well, I guess we went through each of the line we items. Through, we went through each of the line items and that, that free cash distribution. Right, and then we the, voted the whole thing. Yes, so that works. Karen, don't we have to vote on free cash now? Yeah, because isn't there an allocate? Mm -hmm. There's the review and vote. Yeah, we that's. Have to vote, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Marquette. That's what I thought. Council yeah. Marquette. Yeah. Something wasn't right. We have to vote on the bottom number. Okay. What is? So Which is not what's clarification. We so should we have a new also, number on free cash. Anything else that we need to do? What we're using? Yes, there should be a recommendation on the vote of the distribution of free cash. Okay. So we back here. We can say as presented, and then we don't have to have a number. Okay. So, so you're <laughs> talking about in this case the distribution of the total of one million three hundred eighty-seven thousand eight hundred two eighty-nine. Is that what you're referring to? Yeah. No. Good. Yeah, there needs to just be a couple of corrections on here. Mm. Okay. Or a couple of revisions. The FY 2022 capital project budget, the amount of free cash coming uh, being used would be one million one ninety five one twenty eight. Okay, one million one ninety five one twenty eight is the amount of free and cash. And the used. stabilization fund contribution would um, be reduced to one hundred and seventy five thousand. One hundred seventy five thousand. Well, okay. To stabilization. Uh, <laughs> okay. Mr. Chair. Go ahead. Who you to Karen? Um, since we're making recommendations tonight that are possibly changing the amount, how should that be taken into consideration? Because we're we're, we're recommend like the subcommittee tonight recommended to strip out uh, or not to support the two hundred. Right. Um, thousand, or the school system, for example. So, what, so what, how would that would that change the number? I believe I believe that was the only thing we actually took out. The hundred forty. Well, the hundred forty well, was just switched to from. Yeah. But I think that's the only thing we removed. Right. So we was, reduced it by two hundred and forty thousand then, because we reduced it to the two hundred and then the forty thousand from the um, the. Um, the, the handrails and the no that was the that was still Wait. being taken out of free cash that was just that was just being reallocated to a different location but if i may based on what you did yeah, yeah. but if i may i i thought the 200 that you voted to send just a no recommendation on the item but you didn't vote to recommend doing something else with it or not doing something else with it so mm. i would have argued so. that the 40 would have just been the only thing in limbo, but we voted to have them spend it some other way. So I think we're still at the same amount. It was just a matter of what council decides okay. to do with well, it. Well, no? that, that's true. That's a good point. I don't know. We never did. We never did say not to do something. We didn't yeah, you just said things. not to we just send we it up like in the affirmative. Way. You didn't say yep. change it in some way. Whereas right. we said with the 140, take 40 to something else, 100 to, we didn't say do anything with it. We just said we don't, we don't like it. So well, then, in that case, then um, I don't know. is there is what's the pleasure about if we don't like doing that as a as a committee with that two hundred grand? What would you like to see done with it? I, I, I would make the motion that we accept the uh, that we send up to council the free cash total of one million one hundred ninety five thousand one twenty eight. Yeah. Okay, and we, let them right, and that and that should we add the stabilization amount in there too, or is that fine just the way it is? Oh, it would be the stabilization amount of 175,000. And the right. stabilization of 175. Right, because okay. they may choose to add money right. to the stabilization yep. or something mm -hmm. else. Right, okay. So is there and, a second on that? Mm -hmm. Oh, second. Okay. Mr. Is Chair, that, if I could, okay. I just wanted to let you know that would leave 17,674.89 in free cash. And the recommendation would be, if that's not needed for any other purposes prior to June 30th, that we would recommend transferring that balance to the stabilization fund. Okay. 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 Should that be part of the motion now, or should we do that later? No, we, we can do that later. Okay. Okay, okay. so we have a motion and a second on the floor 
to recommend the one million one hundred ninety-five thousand one twenty-eight from free cash, with one hundred seventy-five thousand going to stabilization. Uh, Ms. Clements. Yes. <coughs> Councillor Ryan. Yes. Councillor Marchetti. Yes. Ms. Shea. Yes. And I'm a yes on that too. Okay. Cool. Excellent. Before we adjourn, could I just have a clarification? Go ahead. Now the next step is for this to go to a public hearing, correct? Through you to the town manager. Yes, pursuant to the charter, there has to be public hearings on both the operating budget and the capital budget, and they have to be posted two weeks in advance. So the soonest, uh, just for clarification, through you to the town manager, so that the soonest that we can vote on this is that the May 24th meeting, correct? Mm -hmm. Right. I okay. think and I think that's yeah. in part because we had the two-week lead time on that, but generally you have to have things in so many days in advance on the newspaper, and right. we use the, the local paper. So right. I believe the earliest is the 24th, at least the last time I spoke to staff. Yeah, by, by charter, we have to approve one by the end of May. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we have to approve this by the end of May, right? Yeah. That's what you yeah. just said? Okay. Yeah. That's what I thought. Yep. Yeah, the, so 11, I mean, the 11th month of the fiscal year. So you could mm -hmm. actually have the public hearing on the same night as the meeting? Mm -hmm. We right? could, theoretically, yes. Okay, I just, um, I'm I think just that trying has to... happened before, but All right. I think it would make more sense to do it earlier if we can. Um, I just clarify, is that, that public hearing, is that a council public hearing or is it a manager public hearing? No, it has to be. I'm a, not even sure on that one. <laughs> it has to be like before the council meeting. I know the capital budget is a, is a council mm -hmm. public hearing. Okay. It just, it, just say, it just says, under the charter, it says, the town council shall publish in one or more newspapers of general circulation the general summary of the budget and a notice stating the times and places where copies are available and the date, time, and place not less than two weeks after such publication when a public hearing on the budget shall be held. Doesn't actually say whether we're doing it or the manager is doing it, but I think logically we would be doing it since that's ultimately our budget. So, but just for clarification, it does say after the public hearing, and on and bef we're before the end of the eleventh month, right. the town council shall adopt. So it has right. to be after, right. I would think. Okay, just, I was just wanting a clarification on that. Right. That's a good one. I know this is my second year, but I'm still kind of like, it's still kind of uh, confusing yeah. sometimes. Yeah, some of the, some of the charter stuff is a little confusing. I think that was a good question. That was yeah, it was a good one. Because yeah, sure. we get messed up on dates. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Make a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor, Count Ms. Clements. Yes. Council Ryan. Yes. Council Marchetti. Yes. Ms. Shea. Yes. And I'm a yes. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for all the time that you've uh, de devoted to doing all of this budget stuff and the capital stuff. And um, have a great night. <laughs>